Now let us start with an examples with some examples on one dimensional arrays. So already we discussed, we started with one dimensional array. Now we will see how do you initialize one dimensional array. You can give values to each array element whenever array is first defined. See here, this is how, this is one way of initialization, initializing the arrays, A of five. So you can initialize all the five numbers, uh, nine minus five, six to eight like this. This is how you can initialize an array. This is one way of initializing, like how, even you initialize like this, how does it look like, we'll see that. In the above example, value nine is stored in A of zero. Value minus five will be stored in A of one. Value six will be stored in A of two. Two will be stored in A of three. And value eight will be stored in A of four. In the memory, like this it looks like. A is a array name, name of an array. Zero, one, two, three, four are indices. If there is less number of elements specified than the size than the size of the array, the remaining elements are filled with zero by the compiler. For example, W of five is an array of type float. I've initialized this only with three numbers, one point five like this, two point eight, two point five. In this example, value one point five is stored in W of zero. Value 2.8 will be stored in W of 1. Value 2.5 will be stored in W of 2. The elements W of 3, you are left with two more. W of 3 and W of 4 is left. See, this is 5 is the size of an array. File, you can store five elements. These are the indices. You have stored only three numbers. So rest will be filled with zero. This is the default value will be zero. So if the array does not include an initialization, then the array elements may contain the unexpected values called garbage values. When an array has explicit initialization, its size can be omitted from the declaration. Example, a of 5, 9 minus 5, 6, 2, 8. It's equivalent to int A of, you are not specified any size within the bracket. Note this. It's equal to, you have initialized with the same values, 9 minus 5, 6 to 8. So this is as good as this. Either like this you can initialize or you can also initialize like this. So how do you access the elements of an array? So consider the declaration in tf 5 We can read five elements into the array through the input device by writing the following program fragment. I'm asking the user to enter the elements. So once you start entering the elements for i is equal to zero, i less than five, this is the condition. I'm reading into an array. A of i is an array. I'm reading into that. So to print the five elements of the above array, we write the following program. The elements are now for loop. You just put it in C of statement. It will output the array elements. So to read the elements into the array and printing the elements, how do you do that? Let us write a program for that. I have declared an array of size 50. So enter the size of the array. It will read. I am reading the size of an array. So I am taking the size that is stored in N. Next, enter the elements. I am asking the user to enter the elements. I will put it in. I will store it in A of I. Because as long in the size for all the numbers till the size will be stored in an array. 
This is using CN statement, I'm doing it. So the elements are, these are the output statement, followed C out E of I. So the elements will put the, I mean, whatever the elements are stored in an array of I, I'm just putting it to the screen. So memory representation for one dimension, how it will be there for of one, di uh, this one dimension array memory representation is how. The elements of one dimension arrays are stored in continuous memory locations. So consider the declaration char e of i, e of five. So the element e of zero is allocated at a particular memory location. The element e of one is allocated at next memory location and so forth. Since the array is of the type char, each element requires one byte. You can see here. So the amount of storage space required to hold an array is directly related to its type and size of the array. The total size can be calculated using the relation size of, you can give the size of type into size of an array. So that will give the total size. The total size of the char array required is 1 into 5, that is equal to 5 bytes. The total size of the inter required is 2 into 3. So size of into that array. That will size of an array will give you the total size. So to find the sum and average of n number of the array, let us see how. I've declared an array that is a of 50. So I'm asking the size how many elements that I'm reading that size I'm reading in to n variable n. So I'm asking enter the elements. Whatever he enters, I'm reading into the array E of I. Next, I've initialized some variable sum is equal to, to zero. And then for I is equal to zero, I less than N. Sum is equal to sum plus E of I. So I'm out of that, I'm finding average. That is float of sum by n will give you the average. I'm printing both sum and average. So if for example I have entered the element 5. See, I've entered the element 5. Size is 5. So next last user will enter the element 10, 20, 30, 40. If so, yes. What is the sum? 150. What is the average? 30. Like that. This is the output. So to find the second largest of n number in the array, let us take the elements, how many elements, store it in size that is n. Now we will enter the elements. You read that elements into an array, a of i, using for loop. Then check for the condition. If a of 0 is greater than a of 1, then largest is a of 0. Otherwise, second largest is next second largest is equal to e of one. Else, if not, if this condition is not true, if e of zero is greater than e of one, if it's not true, then what happens? Largest is largest is e of one and second largest is e of zero. So for i is equal to two, i less than n i plus plus. Again, if a of i is greater than largest, second largest is equal to largest, largest is equal to a of i. Else, a of i, if a of i is greater than second largest, second largest is equal to a of i. See how largest is the value stored in the variable largest. So, in the second largest, the value will be stored in second largest. So, for example, if I have given like this, how many elements? So, 5. I have entered 5. So, I enter the elements. I have entered elements. So, out of that 5 elements, I have entered uh, 50 is a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 I entered. So, largest is 50. Second largest is 40. See, the process of arrangement of data items in ascending or descending order is called sorting. 
to sort the number first you have to take the numbers you will enter the number of elements once you read that numbers first you have to take the size and then you have to take the elements of an array that using for loop you have to take the elements of an array after taking that elements you have to put the condition if a of j is greater than a of j plus 1 swap it otherwise you have to keep it see the if you have entered the element 30 20 randomly have entered after you sort it 10 20 30 40 like this it should be in sequence so if first number i'll call it as j second one i'll call it as j plus one so if this is greater than this then swap it otherwise you proceed till the end okay outside for loop will check for the loop to find position of a given array to find position of a given number in the array here i have declared i'll ask the user to enter the number of elements that i will to store it in n that is size it will that is i am asking the size and size will be stored in n next i'll ask to enter the i'll ask to, to enter the elements of an array so using for loop i will read that into the variable that is array e of i e of i and then which element to be searched that also will take element now i'll do the logic for searching i'll call one variable position and i'll assign it my as uh, to that position pos i'll assign it to minus one now using for loop i'll initialize to zero that i is less than n if if this condition is true if e element is equal to e of i if that element, if it is equal to e of i, position is equal to i, you break from there. So, if position is greater than or equal to 0, element is present at that particular position. You can write that because position you have got it. Otherwise, element is not present. For example, this is the output, enter the number of elements. So, I have 5 elements. I have entered the elements, all the elements. I want to, uh, the search element is 48 k. 40 is present where? At the position? At the actually it, it is present at the position 4. Here i plus 1. If you send a position is equal to i plus 1, then you will get exactly this. So thank you for watching. For more such videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel. For any queries, please write to us.